this is housing development the only tv program that gives you first-hand information on housing finance construction and all that's got to do with housing in nigeria and beyond as always i am your housing diva flora annie today on the program we shall be looking at the federal mortgage bank of nigeria's core cat with 2022 projections with architect ahmed dangiwa on voices on the streets nigerians speak on what should be done to real estate developers who fail to deliver to their subscribers these are more housing stories are lined up for today first let's start with the headline news i'll be back in a moment Stakeholders in the building sector have called for strict enforcement of the rules and regulations that will discourage, eliminate illegality and unlawful survey works in the country, stating that the effective implementation of the Survey Coordination Act 1962 would go a long way in affecting other sectors, giving rise to a thriving and sustainable economy, improved governance and security for the citizens. The Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, have noted the increasing importance in considering the developmental challenges the government is faced with, especially the prevailing insecurity that has bedeviled the country, emphasizing the rapid changes in the surveying and mapping practice in Nigeria and the world at large. According to him, to achieve any meaningful development, there must be strict adherence to the regulations guiding the practice of surveying through professionalism by qualified and competent persons. Ayodeji Joseph, the Managing Director, Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, LSDPC, has expressed concerns on plans of the corporation in assisting low-income earners own homes and promote new technologies in property development. LSDPC, known as a lead company in the housing development of the country, is now partnering with private developers to achieve a mutually beneficial and symbiotic relationship. According to the managing director, there is need for resources to provide more housing, which is a priority as the companies seek to provide houses for the low-income earners and to further engage in any kind of property development. However, the corporation is not oblivious of its role to make housing accessible. This is why it collaborates with Lagos State Government to plow back some of the profits generated from commercial activities towards the provision of affordable housing. The pioneer president of the Building Collapse Protection Guild, BCPG, builder Kunle Awobudu, has said the guild is determined to eliminate the quacks responsible for most of the infractions causing building collapse in the country. Awobudu, who spoke during the inauguration of the newly elected executives of the Guild in Lagos, called for sustainable partnerships and transparency in the fight to prevent building collapse. According to a statement by the Guild engineer, Eddie Atumoyogo, he urged the government at all levels and the investing public to patronize qualified and competent local professionals on projects across all the built environment professions. Further noting the message of compliance to extant building planning law to every state physical planning authority to ensure best practices and to further strengthen the ongoing monitoring of construction activities to highlight deviations from best practices. Building materials and labor costs have once again taken a leap in the real estate sector following rising in inflation and exchange rates in the economy, raising fears among prospective builders of even harsher times ahead with construction materials such as cement, steel and finishes and labor which have experienced a significant increase in prices have all led to a rise in development costs of commercial high-rises, offices and other buildings. According to the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, increased global demand in the construction sector combined with the multiple and complex impacts of the pandemic and logistics issues have resulted in unprecedented shortages, delays and untimely increased prices of materials and labor across the economy.
To read more housing, finance, and construction news, do well to visit www.africanhousingnews.com. The National Housing Fund was established by Act 3 of 1993 with the sole aim of managing contributing savings scheme known as National Housing Fund in Nigeria. How has the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria managed these funds under the leadership of architect Ahmed Dangewa? What are FNBN's plans for the year 2022? Let's take a listen to architect Dangewa. You should know that uh, from statistics, for every house you have built, you have created, you are creating at least not less than 17 jobs for every house. That means for the 12,000, over 12,000 houses you have built, you have created over 200,000 jobs currently. So also the home renovation loans, even though it's a home renovation loans of 75,000 Nigerians have benefited, for every home renovation you create at least three jobs. If at all, if at all you are renovating your house, at least three people should benefit from that. We must have created at least minimum of three jobs. That means over 200 jobs also. So in a nutshell, we have created over getting to a half a million jobs currently. So within the current year that we are about to enter, we are still pursuing our capitalization, which uh, was a current chairman that came on board who has seen the need for us to be recapitalized. We are taking that at the matter again with the Honorable Minister and then to FEC, at least for, for approval of this recapitalization of the fund. With the recapitalization, more jobs, more houses, more units will be created, to which the, the, the quantities will, is going to more than double this amount we have, we have mentioned earlier. With the five-year strategic development plan, which we are planning, which we have uh, just reviewed due to COVID-19 that affected the first uh, year of implementation, we are, we, we are, we are reviewing it, and uh, it's going to be very much impactful. The target is to reach out to the informal sector, who has the majority of Nigerians, the traders, those roadside mechanics and other things. These are Nigerians who, once they are honest, they will create a lot of jobs. They are creating jobs for Nigerians. And once we assist them to home, to, to home ownership, they are doing a great job for Nigeria. The most importantly, with the creation of the cooperative housing development loan, any cooperative society, even the roadside, the road, the national union you know, of road transport workers, their corporate society can package houses based on their own affordability, even if it is a two million naira house. Design it, package it, and bring it to FNBN on an unencumbered land. We'll approve that loan, and then we'll create any of the product, either through NHL mortgage loan or, or through rent on for you to, to access houses for your own membership. So these are some of the things that we have given out to Nigerians, and Nigerians are, are answering to that call, especially the corporate housing development. With the digitizing of the FNBN operations, which we hope to finish it within the first quarter, I said, of this year, is going to improve our turnaround time. All those complaining about forms, about whatever, you'll get it online, fill your form, forward it to us, it will be processed online, and then you get your loan approved. You might only maybe visit a branch office nearest you to lodge your, your original documents for us to repair or disbursement of the loan. So these are some of the key things we intend to do. With the, uh, as I said, the, the mini city project, which I've just started, the 12,000, uh, the, the 5,000 houses that we are on, they will soon be finished. Uh, as Brands of are already on ground, the others are about to take off once we get a note from the Honorable Minister. So we have a lot of uh, things to do. We create a lot of jobs for Nigerians. Are you a chief executive officer within the real estate, mortgage, building materials and construction industry? Then the Abuja International Housing Show CEOs Forum, a gathering of high profile professionals who are founders and business owners has a slot for you. The all important CEOs Forum, which will hold at the International Conference Center Abuja is a convergence of elite chief executives from Nigeria and across the world to devise most effective solutions to challenges in the housing and construction industry. Over 200 CEOs in real estate, mortgage housing finance, construction companies and professional institutions will focus on the macroeconomic and socio-political environment impact of the real estate market. This collaborative and supportive forum will also give you an opportunity to present and discuss challenges facing your organization, seek the way forward, and click in high-level business network relations. For further information, visit www.ihsabuja.com or send an email to abujahousingshow 
at gmail.com. I'm Debbie Erb. I work for OPIC in the United States and uh, keep watching the affordable housing development program. My name is Femi Adewole. I'm the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Family Homes Fund. Uh, I endorse the housing development program and the impact that is making in providing information about housing in Nigeria. Welcome back. The program is housing development. Still on the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. How can contributors to NHF check their NHF monthly contributions? How can more minimum wage earners become homeowners? Let's find out. For a minimum wage earner who earns like 30,000 house, 30,000 naira per annum, if let's say he has 25 years to go, that means every month you pay 10,000 naira times 12, that is 120,000 naira. So in, he can only afford 2.4 to 3 million naira house. So since this is what you know you can afford, you need to get yourself into a cooperative society, make your own designs that suit these affordability demands you are having. Once you are able to design it and approach the bank, or approach your state governor if you have a very good governor who sympathizes with you too. He should be able to give you a free land, unencumbered land, for you to approach FMBN to use it and then get a loan to build that houses by getting a developer who could uh, uh, sit down and build a, an affordable house for Nigeria, for you people. So this kind of thing that we do. And our collaboration with the labor centers will ensure that we build one bedroom that is incremental and two bedrooms that can one day be converted into three bedrooms. These are some of the designs that we always encourage anybody that's coming to us. Do it incremental so that the low, mid, mid, the, the low income earner can start with what he can afford. Later, at his own face, within his own limit, he can increase it incrementally into a bigger house. So this is what we're able to do, to do that. Are you tired of shifting through classified ads and online directories to find your new home ownership or rental through mortgages and more? No more stress of finding units and setting up viewings. Connect with many trusted real estate and construction companies that specialize in affordable products. Oh yes, relief has come with the Abuja International Housing Show 2022, where you will not only meet real estate and construction stakeholders, but also meet the companies that can help you own affordable homes, purchase affordable building materials, and others for your building projects. Or are you a housing or construction stakeholder or organization looking to meet other fantabulous brains and faces, making things happen in the housing sector? Look no further. The 16th Abuja International Housing Housing show is for you and yours. It is the largest housing and construction event in Africa. Come, exhibit, network, and make sales. Live from July 25th to 28th, 2022 at the International Conference Center, ICC, Abuja. For further inquiries, 0816-6570-090. That is 0816-6570-090. The 16th Abuja International Housing Show. Be there. If you just join in, the program is housing development. An ad hoc committee set up by the House of Representatives to investigate asset developers in the federal capital territory has decried the high rate of bridges and infringement on the laws and procedures governing real estate business in Nigeria. What sanctions should be given to such developers who fail to deliver to their subscribers? Let's find out what Nigerians think on Voices on the Streets. It should be a very, very strict one, like jail terms. Because this government came with um, anti corruption fight. So, anybody that does not meet, any developer that does not meet the standard of the building should be jailed, should be sent to prison. 
to be sanctioned and she, they should take away his, his certificate for him so that others will learn from that. The problem is who are those people approving, approving the, 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 the plans? It is them that needs to be punished. You know, before they start any building, they, are most, they will take uh, the document, the plans, to an authority for approval. But for the authority to approve the wrong thing, you get what I'm saying? They must be sanctioned for it, not the developers. Developers cannot do anything without authority, without nonsense, without that project being approved. But who approved it? The, the authority that approve it are the one that is so responsible for the damages or for the loss. Uh, existing laws guiding development of infrastructure buildings in Nigeria. Um, I know the association or society or council regulating buildings, construction work, engineering work in Nigeria. And I want to believe there are existing laws, those things that should be observed in development. So I will rather refer to that body, that regulatory body controlling infrastructural development, buildings, construction work in Nigeria, and uh, uh, apply the applicable laws under their, uh, as, as stipulated in their laws. Besides that, it's very appalling the number of souls that have been wasted as a country. It's embarrassing as a nation. And I want to believe that before any building is certified, you know, uh, any plan. People, people don't bother about the sanction. And that is the problem. There are laws. There are laws everywhere, governing everything we do we have in this country. But people do things with impunity and get because they get away with it. And, and, and that, that's about it. There are sanctions are quite okay. But then, who gives the sanction? That's the question. Wancheng, CEO of iBuild Global, and keep watching the housing development program. I am Dr. Sam Ewu, Senate Committee Chairman on Housing. Keep watching housing development program. Welcome back. You can visit www.africanhousingnews.com for more housing, finance, and construction news. Stakeholders in the real estate sector have identified lack of access to construction finance as a major factor militating against the realization of affordable housing delivery in the country. Why the availability of housing finance is essential for increasing housing production, certain requirements has to be met by developers to get financing for the housing project. The managing director of Family Homes Funds, Femi Ad.
So glad you're still with me. The program is housing in development. Coming up next is Brains in Hammers, Bungalow City. Bungalow City is a 8,000 affordable housing unit project developed by Brains and Hammers. It is situated along the Kuba Expressway in the Federal Capital Territory. This project is broken into phases. The phase one of the project has 1,000 housing units that are completed or at different phases of completion. The second phase of the project is made up of 1,250 housing units broken into two bedrooms and three bedrooms. This second phase is fondly called the Mega City and is fully facilitated and supported by the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. The partnership between Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria and Brains and Hammond speaks to the credibility of not just the company, but how far we've come in providing affordable houses for Nigeria. We have um, two set of customers. We have individuals who are self-sponsored. We have um, project that is sponsored by FMBN as well. You can subscribe and get a mortgage through FMBN. So the individuals and the general and the mortgage subscribers all fill the form at the first um, 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 activity in getting the houses. You fill the form, we give you an our, um, offer letter. After that you make initial deposit, then you decide whether you want to go for mortgage or you want to be self um, sponsor. If you do doing self sponsor you either you go for outright or you go for the nine months um, payment plan. If you want to go for mortgage you fill in your form, you pay the necessary contribution, then you you submit your application to the PMB and they process and get the money back to us. Once that is done within three to six months you'll be able to get your house. For the 1,250 units in the mega city, our clients will have the unique opportunity of uh, access to mortgage as well as rent to own opportunity, fully supported by the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. This was made possible because of one, the expertise that Brains and Hammers bring to four, the development capability of the company as well as the readiness of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria to provide housing for civil servants and low income earners, starting with the Federal Capital Territory. current housing gap of above 70 million homes in Nigeria would not only provide housing for our people but also create 60 million new direct jobs and countless more indirect jobs. This is possible with the right policies, incentives and mortgage solutions to put home ownership within the reach of more Nigerians, especially those in the low income segment of the society. On that note, I call it a wrap on today's episode of Housing Development. Thanks for watching. I remain your housing diva, Fleur Annie. See you soon.